Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here from the Kayak Fishing Show Live, brought to you as always by Ballast Point, and today particularly Death Wish Coffee, because I have to go uh, do some packing for Belize, so no beer today, not till later. Um, really excited, got uh, our good friend and sponsor of the show, Wes Siegler, is going to join us today, and as I've mentioned on all of these broadcasts is that uh, Wes is generously offered to give away one of his, well, he actually said a reel of your choice. So if you want a uh, MF or a BF, or if you prefer one of the conventional reels, um, like I said, very, very generous of Wes to do that. Uh, but we need a hundred shares. And right now I think we're at about 50. So not really that far to go. We got 50 shares before the show even started. So um, trying to look at some of these. Hey, Franco, how are you, man? From Argentina. We get, we get guests from here from Argentina. Very cool. Andrew, always on here with us. Thanks so much. Harmony, uh, thanks for joining us. Not away, naughty heads. <laughs> Give me some of that coffee. It, you know what? That coffee, Death Wish Coffee is the strongest coffee in the world. And uh, I don't do uh, energy drinks, but I sure do coffee, and that's some good stuff. Uh, Robert, how are you? Um, man, I, we got a bunch of comments on here already. Um, we just need those shares up. So with no further jibber-jabber, let's bring on Wes. Siegler, Wes, my friend, how are you, man? Fine, man. Tired from being on the road, but back at the shop, which is good. Yeah, you just did a uh, tour uh, down through Florida, visited some um, shops and such, I understand. How'd that go for you? Really well. We uh, started in northern Georgia and uh, went down the East Coast, hit the boat show down in Miami, then jumped over to Naples and worked our way up to Tampa, and then got to Charleston sometime late last night and just rolled her home. So just to make sure I was here with you. Well, I'm glad you did. Uh, I know a lot of people want to talk to you. A lot of people are excited about uh, what you have going on with the reels and and everything. So, but I want you know. First off, let's start off with uh, you know. Let's let's do this. <laughs> Who is Wes Siegler? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, Wes is a good friend of mine, and we, we have a lot of fun fishing together and joking around all the time. But uh, pretty interesting past, um, and I'm sure people are interested. I mean, not too many people probably know that you were a uh, former uh, professional cyclist um, before you started this whole uh, nonsense of having a real company. Right. Yeah, yeah so a little bike. Uh, did that whole thing for about 10 years and worked. You know, lived in Europe, did that side of it, and then got back to the stage race, and then just kind of, you know, went on my next life, I guess. And one thing we did as a kid, we always fished, and when you're racing at that level, you never have a chance to, uh, you never have a chance to go fishing because you're always training and traveling. So, went, moved out on the water in Chesapeake Bay, and uh, just went right back at it. So, next thing well, you also, a after your actual cycling, you had a, a bike company as well? Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so I designed and made different stuff from, you know, it could be frame sets to uh, componentry to wheels. Um, spent a lot of time in Taiwan doing work there. Um, so, yeah, got a lot of experience on manufacturing and making things. Um, so, yeah. I how do you think components of bikes and knowing so much about that helped you with the when you started designing reels? Yeah. Really? No, I mean, I think the biggest piece is that um, you just take, like, as a rider, you would go down a mountain and descend or you're springing and something would flex, just in translating that into making it better. So I don't think it's really, everybody thinks it's the gears and the blah, blah, blah. It's really just like taking a problem and trying to solve it. So I kind of like maybe just feel that, hey, it could be better. So. Right. And that's that's what you've always said every time we've talked to it is, is you look at problems and, and try to solve them, try to make things a, a better, simpler. Yeah. 
It's the big bad guy. It's just make it simple. It's, it just got to make sense to me. I hate hearing somebody go, well, that's just the way it is. And you're like, well, that's dumb. Like, why are we doing it that way? And that's like, right. But sometimes, yeah. sometimes making something simpler is more difficult. Yes, I think so. So you walk through it backwards, forwards, and your first design won't be as simple. And then you're trying to figure out from manufacturing to, I mean, it could be sourcing materials to manufacturing to, um, you know, items in there. We have parts because we have to hold the inventory to make these wheels. So whenever you have constraints in making things, you just try to make it simpler. That's just one thing that I kind of do and try to make things. So, what, what, would, what would be an example uh, of making something simpler in a reel? Um, like, just to say a conventional reel, for example, like I got one here. Most companies will put, this is just the side case. You'll notice something like these little stops. They're just machined in. People don't realize most companies will put a screw and a little bushing or boss. Well, people don't realize on the machining, that's a drill and a tap versus just a mill. Then you go to a screw and then another part to have an inventory. Then from there, you have a little guy that's in assembly, maybe Russell or Justin or the guys, then they have to put the screw in the hole and pop it up. So then you just save a lot of steps to either building, making, or uh, anything on, on, on any aspect of it to common parts. So it's kind of what I do and what I like doing. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a big fan of the reels. Yeah. Um, you've, uh, got a picture of one of your, um, the, I think that's a small game narrow up there. Yeah. SGN, which quite honestly has become one of my favorite reels. No, it's, it was interesting. Yesterday I was down in South Carolina and I go into shops and I'm on my way home. It's one of my last stops. And I stopped at this type of shop called Habits. And the, the most interesting parts when you go in the back of the shop and you see that parts room. And they just moved their main shop parts area to another area. They had a, I took a picture and put it on Instagram. This is, an, they have like a card catalog of parts. It took a whole wall and I posted up on Instagram going, you know, wow. Just to have the organization to do that and have all those parts just to keep reels going. Mine are like, I think you might have. I, I saw that picture. I'm like, I could never be that organized. No, that, that, that real uh, service center was the coolest thing. You made up, I mean, everything from ultrasonic cleaning. I, I spent at least an hour in there hanging out. Just, I learned so much when you're there. You see their problems, and, and you just try to make it easier on Katrina's. Right. Um, I mean, you, you, made, you started off with the one reel, which was a small game. Yep. And and you've kind of progressed um, quite a bit, and and I think one of the coolest things also about about Siegler Reels is not being a big company, you can be really quick to react. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's a distraction I've heard from people. So I try to listen at these shows that I'm going to or these visits. You hear about problems people have. It could be you in the kayak, and it could be just a general customer that just doesn't understand what we do a certain thing. So um, I just take it, try to come back to home base and tune some things to make them better. Now, I also had a big problem when, for example, phone companies or TVs or cars, when you buy this edition and then you are the coolest kid on the street and then all of a sudden next edition just makes you obsolete. So I try to like make revisions inside the wheel where no one notices it, but they can be upgraded. So you know, if you have a reel that's from two years ago to today, other than probably three different names on the reel now, <laughs> <laughs> we're not even going to get into the name change thing. It's Siegler reels, and we're just going to move forward with that. <laughs> that's right. If anybody wants to know about the reel uh, name change stories, we've done stuff about it in the past. Look at some of them. But we're we're moving fast and furious forward with Siegler reels and. You know, it, it's such an awesome thing because, you know, what you're doing. I know you, you've, I mean, I, I've, I've sat in a plane with you and watched you sit in there doodle. And, you know, your mind is always working on, on new ideas, on new stuff. So, and I'm sure you're, you're not getting any um, input from other people on what you should be doing, right? I get a lot of input of what we aren't doing right. <laughs> but, 
No, no, no. Everybody kind of understands now. I think since being on the very beginning, we had one model. Then we went from the S2 to the LG. Uh, Wes, you froze up on me. Uh-oh. Let me see. Let's see if I come back. Can I get a sandwich wheel upgrade? You have frozen. We froze up there for a second, Wes. My back? Uh, you are back and I am back. I don't know why it froze up there. Corey Ruth wants to know, can I get my salmon's reel upgraded? What can, how can you upgrade that reel? That thing is like, it's up here already. Yeah. I mean, it's your name. Right? I mean, unless it was a Ruth, you know, yeah. I mean, is, that, is that the upgrade is to grind my name out and put his name in? <laughs> 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 Corey's doing a great job and, and always, I don't know if anybody's seen the uh, Back Bay film we just made. It's unbelievable. It's about a little fishery that is real close to me and we used to fish it as a kid and all of a sudden we stopped going there and I didn't know why. So I go to this fly show in Virginia and all of a sudden Corey has this film we put together and we see why the fishery stopped. And, and it happened right on the timeline when my dad stopped going there with me. Um, so Pretty, pretty cool thing. So if anybody could check that out, it's um, really a great document. Yeah, I, I, I saw it briefly. I actually hadn't had the time to actually uh, look at it. Man, I look really broken up in this for some reason. Um, I don't know. If, we've got really bad weather here in San Diego, if you can believe it. It's it's just howling wind. So maybe the wind is blowing around my internet connection. But um, yeah, Corey, Corey's a great fly angler. He and I kind of go back and forth busting each other's balls quite a bit. And he called me out about not being able to fly fish and, and which is true. <laughs> I, 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 as I said, though, I, I, I am a natural. Um, so it, 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 I mean, how, let's put it this way. How difficult, how difficult can it be? Corey can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can even do it. Yeah. Well, I've seen you, you, uh, you can throw a fly as well as anybody I've seen. I mean, I've seen you target practice, in a show floor. <laughs> That's the only time we get to practice. So um, now it's okay to be fly curious. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so um, what did I do here? I hit a uh, wrong button there. Um, so, I mean, besides the, you know, actually this is always, of course, the question and I may as well throw it out there and we'll get to the fly reels here soon. And the fact that, uh, and I should, you know, let's pop that out there one more time. Um, that we are going to be giving away one of these awesome reels if we get 100 shares. So we need 100 shares. Um, the question always comes up. I mean, in California here, maybe more, I don't know about the East Coast. You know what I'm going to ask, right? Yeah, I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> yeah. Why, why don't you need a two-speed? Why don't you make a two-speed? How come you don't have a two-speed? I don't know, you know. Um, yeah, I think it goes to, uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to explain. I mean, it's not that hard to explain. Um, so many of the reasons are simplicity. Um, me fishing, my friends fishing, um, if you just do the phys like the levers and the gear sizes, all of it, it just makes them, you know, pretty much obsolete for the size reels we're dealing with. Um, now, if you get into a swordfish reel or a, uh, maybe just a big, big monster tuna reel, it's different then, okay? But when we're talking a reel that's making 15 pounds of drag and you need to go to one-to-one -one or two-to-one, um, the one thing we've done is it's just a pulley system, and if you get a bigger drive gear to a smaller drive gear, and then the amount of lines on your reel versus not, it, there's all these ratios that actually, if you wanted a slower crank, you actually just put a little less line on it. Um, if you, it's six to one really doesn't matter. Um, but the biggest thing you want is to have the biggest gear connected to the longest crank piece, which would be just like that. Yeah. Thank you. I like it. Um, <laughs> or just slow down if you're so fast. Um, uh, yeah. So it, it's one thing is it's about 18 parts for the, the least complicated, uh, two speed setup. And usually when you, if a fish is pulling and you're holding it, let's say 14, to 24 pounds, that's a lot of pressure. If he's just going to hold, just hold him there. He's not going to run. For, I mean, I don't ever see why you drop him down because as soon as you get slack and he comes at you or does something, that's generally when you lose a fish. So, um, yeah. And there's something coming, so but it won't be too steep. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I, I joke about it with, when, because like I said, I, mean, I walk around at dealers here in California and, you know, oh, well, he needs a two speed. Everybody needs a two speed. You know, they want this, you know, smack your it and, you know, we're not going to say anybody's names and Babbitt and, you know, they got to have a two speed. And they're talking reels that are this big that are making like 12 pounds of drag. You know, do you really need a two speed on a reel that makes 12 pounds of drag? I, I, I don't, I don't get it. And then you've got these reels that are making 50 pounds of drag and I can sit there and just crank on a fish. Yeah. And the crank on makes a big difference. Like people don't realize when you compare crank on to crank on getting an extra half inch to an inch, it's just like a breaker bar on a, on, on anything. When you're, I mean, you're taking your lower bolts off your wheels on your truck. I mean, if you get a little longer one, you can crack it loose. So, there's a lot of little elements in there that make it a big difference. Um, and, you know, I've never heard too many people say, hey, I didn't get that fish to the boat because I didn't have two speed. So that's just I want to have one because that other company has one. And I just Then it starts making the reel heavier. And to me, that's half the battle is fighting the reel and the, the wobbleness of the weight in it. So keeping things light, keeping them powerful, keeping them very simple is, is kind of my thing. So. Well, yeah, and and I've said it all along. I mean, the simple thing is the simple thing is so huge as a kayaker that constantly has to you know tear apart his reels because they got dunked in the water and you know or I, you know if somebody drops it in the sand of the surf or anything like that. Something I can quickly and easy tear apart, and I don't have five thousand parts you know go flying out. You know, you try to open up most of these two speeds, and it's confusing. Tell, have you ever seen a breakdown of a Stella? <laughs> the reason why we don't have two speeds because I couldn't draw the schematic. <laughs> There's just so much going on, you know, and and for me, being able to open up that reel, wipe it out, do a quick maintenance on my, I don't. And I mean, I'm no reel mechanic, but it's so simple. And I and I, I try. I think that's one of the things that sell, sold me on the reels when I first started fishing with them way before we were working together. You know, uh, just that simplicity. It, it, I like things bulletproof, and, and they're definitely that. So, is there um, anything we and we let, well, let's get into the fly reel here in a second? But is there? Uh, I, I know, like I said, people are always suggesting this, that, the other that you should be coming out with. Is there anything you can let on that you might have coming up? Uh, let's see. There'll be a lot of, there's two fly wheels right now. There'll be a third, a little smaller one for dumb fish. Um, and there'll be a really big one for really big fish. Yes. <laughs> what are you uh, trying to stop with that? If you're stopping GT, you know, you know, yeah. Great, great time talking with some uh, bill fishing guys and, uh, Got one in the Pacific, and I got one guy that's in the Atlantic, and then I think he's also touching. I think it's still Pacific, but he's over there in Australia. So, um, they want to go to high speed fly reel that's bigger than uh, diameter. That's uh, the next stage. But then there's also some um, stuff I'm working on right now to make a you know more of a price point reel um, that incorporates a little bit of composite oil with the guts and the strengths that we have, but. It could be a lever drag and star drag. So I'm in the process of that. Um, you know, so it's, we're always making stuff and we're making it as fast as we can. And if, if, if I'm, I'm surprised people can't hear the shop next door to me right here. It's right on that wall. I can hear things running. And uh, so we're, we're going for it, you know, so. Yeah, the, um, and, and I think it, maybe if, if you gave an explanation, people think, you know, hey, it is a real manufacturer, real company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> carry the laptop, do a lot, like walk through there real quick. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, we make them. Um, we have a four thousand square foot building. Uh, offices side is about twelve hundred square feet with assembly included. There's eight people in the shop right now, um, and then we've got three thousand square foot um, in the back where it has our CNC machines, our finishing machines. Um, and just laser and all that stuff. So it's all done in house. Um, so yeah, we really do kind of make them. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you got eight guys working on the floor. You're you're not you know you're not some giant manufacturing facility. You know, it's 
probably pretty much everybody in there could do every job. Right. I think everybody can. We might have an exception with like one, but uh, <laughs> but that's about it. Everybody else can do anything in the shop. They can set up an iCast booth. They can help, you know, machine a belt buckle, or they can build a reel. Service tech could run parts if somebody's out. I mean, now we're frozen up again. Is that me frozen or you frozen? Let's see what happens. You're back. You're back. I don't know, you keep freezing up. All right. Um, can you see me now? Yeah, I got you, man. It's, it's acting really weird today. Um, like I said, my, my picture is totally broken up and everything. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, you're a small company. Everything's made in the USA, um, which is uh, everything but the bearings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, can't we tried and... Um, yeah, it's just to get a source bearing for U.S. manufacturing. The U.S. is, I mean, we could do it, but it's like it's going to cost us about eighty dollars a bearing. The reel will turn into about about twelve hundred dollar reel, um, just passing straight cost through. So we've made a decision there. I mean, everybody in the world, they're all getting their bearings um, from other places, and we just pay a uh, local bearing and spec our bearings to them, and and they deliver them to us. So, um, how do you say his name? <laughs> That's actually funny because I believe it's Weiss. You should know. You speak like Dutch or something. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I can't say it. it's not. Um, he actually uh, was on the show with us a couple weeks back. He won a um, Raymarine Dragonfly. Wow. So Weiss, uh, yes, you bring up the, the, a huge thing there on the lifetime warranty. Is that still going? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's still going. Um, I mean, when you make something super simple and you make all the parts in shop, I mean, one thing is when something goes wrong and it comes back to us, um, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it gives us a chance to see them, see what's going on, why it happened. If it's a, uh, you know, if, if it's a part that we made that had a problem, if it's a bearing that just corroded, or if it's, um, let's just say, it's just a consumer did something like left on the bottom of the ocean for a while. Yeah, we, we you know. We take care of them. So even if it's a mishap, let's say it flies out of your truck, just get it back to us. We're, we're super reasonable about getting it straight, making sure that uh, you know you're not stuck with a dead reel. So I, I know everybody uh, wants a chance at this reel or a reel. We still need you to like, comment, share, 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 share. Right now, I think I just looked down. I think it was like 63 shares. So we got a little ways to go, people. Share this thing. Get it out there. We got to. Show Wes some love so he uh, he thinks yeah. it's worthwhile to, to give one of these awesome, awesome reels. <laughs> so, the, um, like I said, you, you, you started off with all these, uh, the conventionals, and then you have the, uh, the SM and yeah. then the SS, which are your two star drags. And what, what was the, uh, what's the impotence on the SM? That's, that's a pretty interesting reel. Yeah, it's just a total freak reel. Um, I was on the road trip one day, and a guy that I met on the road from all these shows, his name was Ryan White, and I saw Ryan, and he had a um, he had a reel, a little trinity that he had done all this work to, had all these little knobs on the sides, and I was like, "What's that for?" And he said, "Ah, oh, surf cast." He's a well-known caster. He had the record for some time, um, and then all of a sudden, I saw him had his tournament reel, which is a totally different reel. Had no. Um, had no fishability, but it was really good at throwing in the field. So I looked at him and said, hey, I'll just, let's just make one. Let's just make the ultimate surf casting wheel that's also fishable. Um, so that's where it came from. And we were just sitting at hotels. I think it was actually a suffering show in New York. And I think that night I remember walking through the lobby. And, you know, everybody's drinking and partying, all the vendors. And I walked through the lobby carrying my big computer, you know, and they're like, what are you doing with the desktop in a hotel room? And we started <laughs> doing, and, um, the reel came out. It's a, it's a unique reel, but yet it can throw really far. Um, oh, I've seen videos of guys like dumping that thing. Oh yeah, if you dump it with, um, I forget the it was like I think a, I forget what line we said, like twenty pound uh, on them. If you dump it, it's about five hundred and some feet. You do it, okay, we'll give you one. Do it in front of us, we'll give you the reel. So uh, that means you're good enough. You you deserve it. That's that's amazing. Okay, so I was mistaken. I actually updated my uh, my iPad here. We actually have a hundred and uh, hundred and fifty eight shares. 
I've already, I've already said 67. I'm out. I, I, I looked at 63 before and it wasn't updating and now it says 158. That's cool. That's, that's, that's cool. awesome. I appreciate uh, the support from everybody. Um, so let's talk about it. I mean, you, you came out with a fly reel. Um, I know you, uh, you love fly fishing, yeah. uh, but you like fly fishing at that next level. Um, is that, was that where the idea for making a fly reel came from? Yeah. Um, so like the best friend, uh, Lake, he, he's, I noticed that we weren't going to be able to fish together and I was doing fly fishing and he was on my boat, he's fly fishing. He uh, tells me, man, you got to learn to cast and I take a set up, start learning to cast it. Um, catching these rockfish or striped bass all around their, their location. And, um, you know, just right on the bay, around these jetties. And next thing you know, I'm catching other species. Oh, it's a lot of fun. But yet, you know, I'm like, you don't need anything for this. I mean, they, these fish aren't strong enough that can strip on. And then he'd call, he lets me know, he's like, you got to go on this trip. It's to the Seychelles. My dad and I have been a bunch of times. And he's going to go one more time. But he said, one more time. And I where, said, where, where's the Seychelles? It's in the Indian Ocean off of uh, Madagascar. Out, out there in the ocean, um, way out there. Um, yeah, so it's not a, it's not a short trip. No, 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 no. And he said, you know, <laughs> whatever you got to do, you got to make this trip. And we, you know, I didn't know what to take. You know, I don't have any of the fly. You know, I don't know any of the culture of this fly thing. You know, so I pack up all my stuff, all these different meals that I, you know, some of my bars, some of them I had. And, and the next thing you know, um, uh, going on this trip and. Man, I called, uh, I mean, first day, it was like all these bonefish were just coming at me. I thought they were mullet. And you're just plucking away, catching fish, and all of a sudden, you get a hold of a real fish, you know, GT. And when you hit a GT, you find out quick if things are good or bad. And uh, I realized that, like, these fly guys, in a minute, in a good way, they're super technical. Uh, everything is, um, they're tying the tiniest little knots, and they're like, licking it and they have all these binoculars to do it and then they get on the flats and they look like ninjas they're like all their <laughs> stuff and they got gloves for they their neck thing with all their stuff yeah. around their neck they got bling around their neck um <laughs> you know they, they got all this stuff and and then now their rods and the are just really kind of you know out there and then um got out there and just realized man these guys have no clue what they're going track i mean zero they're like pumping the reel they're like Holding it, and I'm like, if you do that bill fishing or tuna fish, you'll pop a fish that quick. Let the drag do the work. They have yeah, no not to mention burn your hand and <laughs> yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm fishing. Uh, so we go on this trip. I come back and I had some issues with some reels, and um, and then the guy on the he basically looked at me. He was looking at my hat, and looked at me, and looked at my hat, and looked at me. It's Scott Llewellyn. Uh, South African, and he said, uh, whatever, I had my bag. He said, you're going to throw that away. I was like, what? I mean, these look great. These look beautiful reels I had. And he said, you're going to just throw them overboard now because you will tomorrow. And uh, next thing you know, first big G I get on, man, it just problems. But I managed to land the fish, but I'm taking the things apart at night. One thing leads to another, and my buddies have the exact same reel, and he's having issues, and they're like, oh, I can fix them. I'm the kind of guy that's like, and these aren't cheap reels. I mean, people are going there. They're they're bringing some high quality stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I noticed there was only one brand. Like honestly, there was one brand, and and, and I didn't know what they were. There's this, the brand is black, and I and I look up in the stable, and I look up there, and it's uh this thing called Charles. I had no idea what it was, but everybody had them except for me and my body is dead, and. Basically looked at those things on the trip and then found a guy that lent me one, Neville from a rod company here in the U.S., and he lent me one. And he said, look at it. I want you to see it. Because I couldn't, I mean, those things are like twenty five hundred, five thousand bucks. And I uh, took it apart. $5,000 reel? Yeah. Yeah. It, that, yeah. But you spend all that money to go all the way around the world, and it fails, that any one of those men will, would say to you that they would give you the money. I mean, they, they would pay for it. It's, it's, it's just reliability, redundancies, and all that. So I looked at this reel, used it as my baseline to build my reel off of, like meaning the performance of It's not the internals or anything like that. Because it's so complicated, we had to make a tool to even break into it. 
Well, when we finally broke into it, there was a little bit of stuff came out water, and they're supposed to be sealed. And you know what I think about sealed, Jim? And they're like, right, right. If a nuclear sub has a bilge pump, how are we going to do with the fishing? So, um, so then it basically I took it from there, and I knew that we could make the pressure and the power. Um, there's no question. And then I just wanted to make it controllable, where we preset the drag, and just like we're going to lever drags. Um, I saw a man on the back of the boat that had a big Atrabali world record IGFA, and he's holding the spool, and he, I mean, he's doing like six pound pivot, and he keeps popping them. And I'm thinking, man, what? And I even asked the guy, his name's Rocky. I was like, do you like put lotion on your hands? How do you know your hands are that smooth? And and he kind of like, you know, I'm always joking. I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah, I go over really well, and he probably thought I was just being an ass or something. But I basically realized that these guys. Or they're awesome anglers. They're actually some of the best anglers I've ever seen in my life. They, um, but yet they take it to the net. You know, they just don't understand drag. So that's where the lever came in, and you could. And then I also saw some other problems where people were stripping and they couldn't strip, or they switch hands when they're fighting a fish from right to left to tighten drag. And it was just like, wow, this is medieval when we didn't. We don't have to have that. So that's where she came from. That's the beginning, and then the next piece was guides were took me back to their little lodges the next year, and I saw all these filming reels just stacked up on their back wall, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool reel. Let me see it. And I'm already in the process of making, and I love seeing other people's products. Never, of course, yeah. you know, not a big bash people stuff, find their problems, but I like looking at it, see what they did, and uh, I'm like, what about that one? That's really cool, and they're like, eh. I got to get it back to the U.S. to send it back, or I got to get South Africa before I mail it to get fixed. I'm like, let's fix it now. And you couldn't get in them. I mean, you can't get in them when you're on a little island or on a boat somewhere. So that's where my design came up to service the whole reel with a hook. Uh, every fisherman has a hook. A man, Russell Weston from Snowbees, years ago, told me, hey, could you make a fly reel that can be serviced with a leatherman? And I thought that was so cool, but yet I'm on my boat one day and I'm looking. Like, do I have a leatherman? No, I don't, I don't carry a leatherman. You know, I have, like, hooks, and I've got maybe, like, a pair of pliers, but not a leatherman. So that's when I came up and designed it so it can be taken apart um, with a hook. And I kind of say a little bit like an AK-47. You know, when you're in the middle of Indian Ocean and something goes wrong, a minute and a half, you have to been totally broken down. Right. Well, we got a, somebody who wants to show us the reel, so why don't you hold it up there and maybe point out some of the features on it. You're on the screen by yourself, so you got the whole screen. All right. All right, so this is the lever right here. This is actually you go from this position, which would be very light or stripping. And then as you go back that direction, you would go to maximum preset drag. So go all the way back. And then you could 140 degrees, you have your preset or your drag range. So if you wanted less drag, if you can see this, I'm not very good with the meat this part, but this little blue dial, you'll back off a couple of clicks, you come back, you can then see your drag setting is less, but yet it'll repeat itself every time. So if you miss the fish, you, you strip again, you go forward with it. I'm um, trying to see how you can do this. So when it's in this position, you can strip your line off, but as soon as you get a fish on, you just pull your hand and the other. Kind of hard to explain when I'm trying to do it. Yeah, you get kind of backwards on these things a little bit. So, so you guys can see there's several other features here. You'll notice the dovetail foot here. Um, I don't know if you can see it real well, but yeah, no, it looks good. All right, yeah, um, that's actually the strongest connection between two um, two parts. Where anywhere you can do it, screws, you name it, dovetails away. Um, it also gives you the lowest profile. So most reels are about five millimeters higher. People ask me, why in the world would we do that? When you're throwing that reel all day and you're casting and it's dangling off your form, the closer it is to your form, the better it is for you. So you're not going to get the torque from it. So it's very low profile. Each reel comes with two feet. Um, the big reason is because if one foot gets damaged, which we have seen countless times when on these trips, um, you come with the secondary one, you slide it in. Um, and off you go. Uh, is this just being held in by one little Allen screw? 
Well, yeah, so the Allen screw you see here actually just goes straight down through a set hole. There's a little hole. It doesn't even fasten to the reel. It just keeps it from going fore out. Um, so then you'll notice a couple other things. Just notice this spool is a little bit, it's a, you see how it's cut out on the inside. So when you're fighting a fish and you're laying your rod over and imagine you're here and you're cranking, you do not have to worry about your back. It just falls into the correct place. And, and also, it's much stronger near the center point of that shaft. So it's like a shelf. You got a shelf here. This is where it gets very simple with Wes. Here's the shelf. Put stuff out here. It's hard. You put it in the inside, it's strong. So, gotcha. so that's why I do that. Um, but it's two features. One is because you don't have to, you know, you don't have to level wand your, your line. You'll notice there's a big handle, um, and it's actually held on by a shoulder, so you don't are actually getting it held on with a um, fastener, so you won't get it bent. Um, you can't bend it. You ever get a fly reel where you crank it, and it's like it kind of bump, bump, bump. Right, bump. right. That's when it gets hit and you bend it. The way this is made, um, it has a little shoulder in it, so it keeps you from doing that. Um, then you go to this side, and you've got your huge blue area in there. That's your huge clutch pack. Um, and that's where it's really a different game. Um, everybody else in the industry is using these things about the size of quarters, and we're using things the size of they don't make money that big. But, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Really, really big. It's the same washers we use in our um, leather drags, the, big, the large game stuff. Um, the neatest part, I think, is when I first originally designed this, I had this little, it came with a clip, and it looked just like that. Me and my simple ways, I thought that's beautiful. No, not so much. So <laughs> everybody complained, and they saw their, like, what I was going to do, because I was like, I don't want a, in, uh, this hubcap. So I actually um, made a little hubcap that goes on with an O-ring, and it just stays on there. And it won't come off unless you pull straight off. It kind of twists to come off. If you lose this and goes away, it's totally fishable. It's just for aesthetics, this little cap. Yeah, um, I mean, it does. Well, it's got your signature on it. That's right. <laughs> you might just throw it away for that. But uh, So once you get to this point, there's an E-clip here. And that little E-clip, it comes with extra pieces. Like every reel comes with a little service care pack. Um, oh, nice. Has, that's, that's really cool. You didn't get yours because you didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> so every year would come to them. But also, if you called me and said, hey, Wes, I'm heading to San Diego Airport. I'm heading to Belize tomorrow morning. Between Which your I house am. and Belize, yeah, between your house and Belize, there's probably 15 places you can get that little clip, okay? So all of the small parts in this reel, you could get it a standard like A's, hardware, Lowe's, you name it. I mean, I wanted to make it not proprietary, weird, you know, stuff. Um, once you pull this clip off, um, the reason why we have a clip over a screw fastener, if people ask me, what in the world, why did you do that? And the reason why was I get to the Seychelles, um, a couple of guys are playing with the reel, and they see that. And they said, oh, man, that's great. I'm like, well, no, 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 I'm going to make one of those real pretty little screwy things and make it so it doesn't, you know, I'll make it pretty. And they're like, no, 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 no. We had so many reels, spools come off. And I'm like, what? I've never had a spool come off. But they said that week before us, they had seven spools come off reels while fighting a fish. Um, maybe it doesn't happen when you get trout fishing, but if a GT has that happen, it's a bad situation. Or something big or permanent or something where it's maybe a one-shot fish. Um, so this actually, it's a positive, it's no or it's go or no-go before you put your cap on. Um, you have a massive AR bearing inside of it that's similar. It's the same one as in the CRF 450 Kickstarter for a motocross bike. So, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want it to fail, and I said, let's go big or go home, and kind of look around if I got one sitting on my desk somewhere, which I don't. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's really powerful. So once you open it up, you can take the whole thing apart. The one thing people are noticing is the startup inertia. Um, and how we eliminated it. It's it's shocking because people get it and they start playing in the hotel rooms like, Wes, I'm a fly guy. And I'm like, uh, and then they actually pick up their old reel and they realize how serious I took that because that's what pops leaders. That's what does the pulsing is not a good thing. So um, that's the BF 
and the little MF is right there. It's about, what I always say is that you've got the BF, which is like 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever, 14 if you want, because it's got enough drag to get 30 pounds if you want. But yeah, you can pounds it. of drag? Oh yeah, if you want it. <laughs> then I got the MF right here, which is, I would say eight, nine, ten. It, but I call it a GT, a couple of GTs, no problem with this. She makes about 20 some pounds of drag. It's just a smaller diameter, a uh, half inch. Um, you're looking at right at four inch diameter wheel. It has all the exact same components inside of it. The only thing different between the BF and the MF is the actual main case, which of course the main case and the spool. Everything else is the same inside. So. And what will the uh, future smaller size, what, 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 what's that going to be? An SF, the small fly, keeping it simple. We're not going to call them like names and numbers that don't make sense anymore. But you're looking at it's going to be about a quarter inch diameter less. And the reason why I'm not dropping down to a, to a whole bunch is uh, you still need like a bone fish. If he turns to you and you've got to do some pickup of the line, it, you just want that pickup. It's going to be slightly narrower. It's going to go from about 10 ounces here. This is just a shot over 10 to right about eight. So I'm getting two ounces out of this reel. Um, and your drag range will go up to 12 to 15, which you could push. I mean, you could, you could catch on the same thing on that. So, uh, almost 200 shares. How bad? Amazing. We asked for a hundred. We should have asked for 500. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so no any other questions on anything um you know I, oh yeah there, there's been a lot and it's just they're, they're scrolling by so fast we're getting a lot of uh a lot of great stuff um let's see a lot of just compliments you know what actually one thing that i was kind of uh wondering or i was going to actually comment on was just that you know, I, people know what like I said. I, I'm just kind of getting into the fly fishing thing. I mean, I fly fish. Fly fishing was one of the first kinds of fishing I ever did when I was uh, a young kid up in Canada. And then, of course, there's not a lot of it going on down here in San Diego, so kind of lost it. Trying to get back into it a little bit more, and I've had just so much fun. You came down to the Fred Hall show in Long Beach last year, and that was the first time I had actually seen the fly reel. And we had this, the, I mean, we basically, we were showing off the lever drag reels and you just had the fly reel sitting off to the side. And so, I mean, nobody was pushing it, nothing like that, but guys who knew, and that's how, what I've always said is, is guys who knew guys who know fly fishing would stop. They would see that thing and go, wait, what, wait, I got to stop. <laughs> I mean, we're talking cranking busy show and they'd be like, Hey, 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 Hey. What's that over there? Tell me about that fly reel. That looks that looks different. Yeah, that that was pretty interesting because we had it just sitting on a, I think a white rag in the corner. I mean, it was like down on the floor, and people would just stop and they'd say, "What's that in the floor?" And you know, they had never picked up the conventional. They don't even care about them. And next thing you know, you and I are just talking to them about fly stuff. Um, but it's it's been interesting. It's a total different segment. Of, I mean. There's people that pick up my conventional reels at these shows. They're fly guys. They're like, so how does this work? You crank it like this? <laughs> I mean, these are in the corner because they, they want to you know, justify, like, how do we make these reels? How do we know about it? And we're like, well, we make these things. And they're like, oh, and then they're like, oh, this is very interesting. Never seen one of these before. And I'm like, wow. So when some people are fly people, I find that they've, you know, you got know, crossover ones. You know, you are, I am. Um, you know, but then there's ones that never pick up the conventional stuff. So it's been pretty interesting just seeing this whole new uh, piece. I mean, this spring doing all the spring shows and having the customers come out. Um, it's it's overwhelming. Like, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you've been doing the fly shows. The, the reception at those shows has been really positive as well. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's nobody else makes a lot. You know, they, they, I mean, I'll, it's, I'll go into even like fly shops now and I'll show them. They're like, oh, what's that? Then all of a sudden I show them and explain it. Then all of a sudden it's, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me go get Antonio. Let me go get 
Fabrizio. The next thing you know, I'm like, where they're going through it and they see what it does and they test it out and feel it and they feel on the rod how we solve some things that are fishing that, they, that aren't, yeah, you can't solve it. They haven't solved it. So, yeah, it's been pretty neat. I, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to, I hate the term, probably the most overused term in the world, you know, is, uh, you know, well, that's a game changer. <laughs> but, I mean, this really kind of, it, it's in that realm. I mean, it, it's its such a change from what guy the fly guys have seen in the past. Yeah, oh, that's what, that's all I'm hearing. And I'm also saying one that doesn't like using that term. I, I just think the evolution of reels and, you know, you just take in everything you can. I mean, if it's the billfish guys, I mean, I spent a, a, probably half an hour to an hour with Chris Sheeter this past weekend talking about stuff and, and on that reel, on the BF, I actually made a little detent system for those guys. And Jake Jordan, you know, I listen to him in the iCast, and he's like, well, I fight fish. And you don't see these little detents we have here. Well, we have the ones underneath the middle part. And then it's go from three pounds of pressure, six, nine, 12. And I just made it so it's an option for guys. And it really was just taking in what those experts that fish for these fish and putting it into the reel. I mean, it's not that hard to do. It's just take their what they've experienced and just making it right. Well, yeah, and I saw that at uh, ICAST last year because we were right next to the fly section and there were some pretty heavy hitters in fly fishing were coming by and looking at that thing. <laughs> and I mean, I listened to their comments about it, but I also watched how you listen to them. And because the, the fly reel is still pretty early stages at that point. And I, I saw you listening to them, and I've seen some of those changes come into effect since then. Yeah. You know, so that, I think that's, like I said, that was one of the cool things about the company in general is that you are able to, to react quickly if something makes sense. Yeah, it's, that's the whole thing. you got to listen for the wish or you're waiting to hear that, what the problem is. That's just every single person. When you fix one problem, it might have been that one guy said it, but, but it, it affects thousands of people, but they just didn't complain. Or they didn't bring it up. So when you hear that, and you just go, a light bulb goes off, and you're kind of like, oh, no. Even if you went the wrong direction, you're like, all right, let's go back. And we go back to the drawing. Let's go back. That is a major problem. Let's, let's solve this. So, um, you know, and then I see the thing where Corey's at crisis, you know. Um, it's interesting. When I went into this world, we're not making any of them. I'm actually making them. And I wanted to give back. Like they, you know, they are they're heavy on the prices. So the the BF, um, she comes in at fifteen hundred um, retail here, and then the MF is one thousand. Um, I mean, because of the limited amounts that I can make, I personally build them. Um, of course, the back the guys machine out a small batch, and then I'll build them out. Uh, in that process, I made a, a box that it comes in. So oh, this is cool. This is very cool. So it's expensive and, you know, it's just because it's so limited um, production. But this box, I kind of want to give back to the people that, you know, you have a lot of people that tell you how good they are and what they can do. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. What do we say, Jim? Like, this is like the hand. Hey, that's a, that's a, a pro staff handshake. <laughs> exactly. Give me. You know, and and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, you know what? You want a deal, then this is it. All right. So this box has four species of fish. you got a GT. You got a tarpon, you got a tuna, and you got a sailfish. Those four species, if you catch them with a photo with my this reel, the BL, it doesn't matter if it's one week, one year, five years, we'll give you a free BF for doing it. Um, it's a challenge. It turns a fifteen hundred dollar reel into a seven hundred fifty dollar reel. Um, we also did it with the MF. So you reward the people out in the water. Fish and let me pull her up real quick. And so the MS box is whoa, there it is. It's got a perm, it's got a drum, red drum, you've got a rooster, and you got yourself a striped bass. Um, catch all four of these, you get, you get one of these for you. Just gotta have a photo with the reel with the species, no matter how long it takes. Um, do I care if this is out of a lake? I don't care. It's cool. If uh, I know that's your skill fish here, your permit, um, the rooster, 
kind of like the Jeep, you know, they'll eat. You just have to be able to cast in some windy condition and strip fast. Um, striper, you know, northeast, my area, it's very popular fish. And, you know, prime talent. Red drums, southeast. So kind of what I've done with those boxes. Kind of a little bit of a reward to people that fish the bag all day. You know, oh, that's, that's 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 awesome. Zach Thomas saying that he'd pay for just the box. Hey, Zach, you can. The box is one thousand dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and it comes with a reel. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of a pain. You know, when I made the boxes at first, I was thinking, "Oh, this is going to be great. Um, this is so cool." And then when you're putting them in the laser to do them, you're like, "It's like two and a half hours to get like like ten boxes." It's like you flip them over, you keep flipping them over, make sure things burn through it. How many have you lit on fire? Um, I don't know. You've known about that at the shop. You look real close. Uh, see through it, that's a little hot. You've got to see a little. So, yeah, we've got a couple on fire. Jim was here one day, and um, I'm trying to make Jim a little special reel for him. And I come out from the back, and the machinist in the back and walking forward's like, the laser is trying to kill itself. I'm like, <laughs> that's I'm right. Like, it was about that level. Yeah. Like, Sean, um, nothing like, going on with the laser. <laughs> it, it was not panicked. So I go back there and that thing is just burning to China. I mean, it's trying to get to China. And I'm like, oh, I'm throwing a glass of water on it. Jim's like, I can't believe you just picked up a Coca Cola and threw it on the laser to put it out. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. I mean, it's like, oh my God, you literally were trying to drill the China. Just <laughs> <laughs> trying to let them out. <laughs> no. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, it's a good point. Lifetime warranty on the fly reels as well, right? Yep, yep. So, you know, a lot of people are seeing the BF and the MF and all that. I mean, the MF, I know, I know it's a pricey piece. Um, can a, can this MF catch GTs? Yes. Got it. Can it catch the target? Yes. It's got tuna power. You know, so you're not going to be compromised. I mean, it still makes 20 pounds. If this is the size you want and it's a stretch, I get it. Um, but you know, we'll stand behind it forever. Any but, thoughts on what you what we, what you're going to put on the small fly box? Hmm. I think a bone fish definitely. So we got a bone, and I'm thinking to myself if we need to put a uh, Freshwater species, a couple. Um, yeah, maybe some big salmon or something. Could do that, a Jim salmon. <laughs> um, I thought about like a largemouth bass. It's you know the most popular game fish there is. I mean, why wouldn't it be on there? And you guys have got the biggest ones around. Um, it might maybe that. Um, I mean, I, I probably once we start building that one, just put a little vote out. And let's get some people pumped up about it and. We'll, we want to have a travel fish, so we want something that's going to take a little bit of skill, or you have to travel to get to it. So you're kind of you're in a club of, hey, I did it. So, um, well, you originally called these destination reels, right? I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, the whole design behind it to be able to take it apart with a hook, many universal parts between the reels. That's what it was built for. Um, you know, it doesn't when you get on these planes and you go to these exotic places or any you know any place that's smaller countries and you get in a little plane you know how it is you get on that last leg and you have to weigh 40 pounds your back you put your wading boots on you're like you know you got a nano puff leaving america and you got like wow we're just getting we're getting a ton of suggestions for fish we'll have to look through this list later i mean it's pretty amazing it is popping up there yeah well i'll definitely go through the list and uh but yeah it's coming it'll be eight ounce reel um working with a couple other guys now that are specialized in that and they kind of reached out to me and we'll be able to release some good news here soon about it. So, you know, Florida's, it was a, we were accepted in Florida. I was, wasn't sure. And the guys down there were totally behind what we do. So Corey's asking you to tell some story. Oh, you know what yeah. he's talking about? Yeah. So, um, we're sitting there on the boat and we've got in, in Cosmo, we've got, we got a couple Americans, me, best friend and his father, and we've got a couple South Africans, and then we've got these two Russians. And these two Russians, they're like, first day I thought they hated me. I walk up, I'm like, hello. They're like, hey. I was like, whoa, where are you from? Siberia. I was like, I don't know what he said, but it sounded like Siberia. I'm like, nobody goes <laughs> to Siberia except for the goalie from the 80s Olympics that missed the skate safe, right? Let's go to Siberia. 
So these, <laughs> so these dudes are on the bed, and they're like super serious. So we're hanging out, and the guys are all telling me, man, they're like, as we're sitting there, and we're like, GT, 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 all this. And they're like, no GT, no GT, trigger, burn it. I'm like, and they'll hit a GT, hand the rod off, and go, no GT. Makes me on I'm like, you go to Cosmolito, and you don't want a GT. So, um, interesting, the guys actually went over to my rods, and uh, they're very, very, I mean, one guy got a, uh, it, I, I don't know if it's called a golden slam, but it's one of the ones who got everything except a milk that day. I mean, insane. So, you got a perm, teeth, bonefish, trigger, I mean, he's an unbelievable fisherman. And uh, he's sitting there, and he goes over the rods, and he's like, the line's up, and he has to be, whoops, did you catch that? <laughs> No, he's pulling on the line, just slowly pulling. And he basically goes, pulls on it, pulls on it, and then was like, walked down below, came up, and just was like, boom. Here's money. I want your reels. And I was like, man, my reels, Jim, you know my reels. <laughs> I'm like the cobbler's person, you know. It's like I got the bad antidotes. I got the scuffs and the beats and dents and scratches. I was like, I can't sell you my reels. He's like, you, I have to have your that's all they can say. I'm like, I can't tell you my reels. So finally, he's like, I go to a stove in three weeks. And I'm like, we're in Cosmo. You know, you go back to Siberia and then back. Um, they end up getting some reels because they just got the, the, the startup inertia problem with reels. So unbelievable, um, you know, support. Uh, you know, we tried to break them. And we've been trying to do it for the past couple of years on Big Big Fish. And, you know, I've got, yeah, it's, it's cool. Well, oh, I've seen um, I've seen some pictures of you with some pretty massive uh, GTs that you caught on the fly there. Um, I, I, that, I've never caught one. I mean, I've caught plenty of uh, big uh, Jack Cravals and all that. And I mean, like you catch them down in Mexico, I've caught them up to thirty pounds. And I mean, they call them Toro down there because I mean they're the bull because they're so tough. And I can imagine when you're trying to stop one that's heading for a coral head or, you know, one of these big GTs. I mean, it's amazing that you can stop them with this reel. I think it's a new type of fishing that people are doing now where if you stop that fish early, um, bigger, heavier leaders. I mean, we were using a hundred pound straight fluorocarbon. Um, we won't talk about any crimp problems I had. I got a little crimp problem. Um, <laughs> I was brushing and I crimped something and I just threw it and let you know, I hit one and then I put him on the reel and then so um but yeah yeah I mean it's fighting the fish really aggressively and really fast. I let the reel do the work and you'll hold some of these big fish in like five minutes. I mean there's not even five minutes. You can't get the camera out or go get the boat, you're already leaving. Um so they're kinda of like tuna, if you hit them hard, they kind of stop. You let them go off the edge and get cooled off like a tuna, go down. I mean, it's a different battle. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big believer in um, tight drags. <laughs> you know, I, I fish a really heavy drag on my conventional stuff. Um, but I mean, just thinking about it, I mean, fly reels tend to be, you know, we have buggy whips, right? Mm -hmm. you know, um, if you're pulling that hard on that kind of, are you, are you literally like taking the rod out of the equation? And, and just point that thing and let that reel freaking smoke them? Yeah. yeah, so you might have a little bit of a lift, a little, you know, you're keeping tension, but it's just, it's very minor. You want the, you want the fish onto the reel and take the, you'll feel the shooting line, you'll feel it stretch. I mean, it's a really crazy thing. You feel it stretch out, but yet the inertia stops and it just boom. So, yeah, you take the rod out. I mean, because, I mean, the legends like Andy Mills and, you know, the Jake George of the world will all tell you, you cannot lift your rod. If you try to lift five pounds up, you can't lift it. You can barely lift five pounds with your rod. Um, and once you learn that you just, you're in line and you're kind of lifting back, you know, pulling straight back using your hips and your arms, man, you can put the heat on this fish. And the rods, yeah, use the rods to deliver the fly, then you use the reel to put them back to you. Yeah, and, and again, knowing knowing where you are on that drag. That's it. You know, 
you know, I was fishing um, right after I cast. I told you that story. Like, I was all focused on PTs. I could care about it less. I mean, about really anything else. And this guy comes up from a little company called Skinny Water Culture. He's in court. And he come up to me and goes, you want to go catch a tarpon? And I was like, never done it. He's like, that was perfect for it. And uh, we figured out that night why it was so perfect or worked was when you do have a fish on and you have him and you're putting the pressure to him on the coals and you've got him under control, as soon as court goes down the leader of this fish, it just was instinct in my head the way from offshore, hey, once he's grabbed that leader, let me just go ahead and put it in the free spool. I didn't have to turn the reel over. I just dumped it the free spool, aimed it at him in case something went wrong. Um, and then something went wrong. The, the tarpon jumped, ripped out of his hand, went nuts. Um, but yet it wasn't a situation of like, hey, I'm going to break the rod, break the reel, and all that. So the quick disengagement was really something around the boat and tarpon around the boat. So it kind of worked out by accident that that made it into a kind of cool tarpon thing. Well, I mean, I can totally get it. And like I said, and not being the, the fly guy, I, I'm, I don't like using star drag reels as much. Ever since I started using lever drag reels, particularly yours that free spool so well, it's like, why use the star drag when I can always know where I am? You know, I can always know where I am in that drag setting. And if when I get that fish close, I always, you know, loosen up my drag. If something happens and it bolts away, well, okay, that's no problem. The load, the rod doesn't load up, doesn't rip it out of my hands, doesn't break the line. And then I can re-engage the drag and know exactly where I am. Exactly. I mean, it's the same thing. Um, it's so interesting watching how people fight a fish. They cast, they stick a fish, they switch hands, they tighten their drag switch back, put a little crank, lose a little line, they go back, tighten a little drag. Instead of just here, and you just basically pull this lever back to you. Um, you can feather it. It's a lot like a handbrake on a car. I tell people, you just pull it up where you want it, it'll stay. Um, so, kind of a fun little thing. We just got to go fish this thing, man. Yeah, well, um, I'm like I said, I'm going to Belize tomorrow. Um, I'll be down there, so I'll be fly fishing. This is This will be one of the first trips in a while that I really am dedicating to fly fishing. Um, and then we got some great trips coming up this year that I know uh, you and I need to talk about. Uh, Panama, I think uh, we need to get that one sorted out. If nothing else, uh, maybe down to Costa Rica. I've got a trip set up for down there. So um, okay. I need to get you on another trip. Oh, uh, yeah, some big ones too. They get the, uh, I mean, we got some well over 50 60 pounds um the last time we were down there so hey everybody we have actually been on for over an hour this has been incredible uh last i checked 204 shares nice. uh, so thank everybody so much for that again this is kind of a weekly show uh and then throw in some kind of uh spontaneous shows from time to time will not be on next week because i will be in belize uh, we'll probably do another live one with Wes because Wes is coming out here to um, California for the Fred Hall Boat and Tackle Show. And I will be working with Wes in his booth, uh, hanging out, talking about all the, the reels, including the fly reels. So anybody in California that wants to be uh, see these things in person, you know, uh, actually Nicholas just asked about Fred Hall. Uh, so, yeah, we will be at the Fred Hall Long Beach Show. Um, unfortunately not Del Mar because again, I'll be on the road again. I think I'm going to be in the Bahamas or something. Um, I, I want to challenge, yeah. what's I want that? challenge you to the steel chainsaw log roll thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing a track shoot. I saw that. That was the coolest thing I've seen ever at a fishing show. We have to bring your baby suit to see if we can stand up on that thing. Yeah, so at the Fred Hall show, they do the lumberjack show, and they they tend to leave the log rolling section in the evenings unattended. So Wes has challenged me to a log roll. So, yeah, maybe we'll do that live. That's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, everybody, thanks so much for, for joining us, and, of course, for the all these comments, over 300 comments. And the 200 shares, I mean, that's what it's all about. And, you know, that's what's going to allow us to have guys like Wes on here and donating such awesome things as the <laughs> – Was this how we were doing it, Wes? Yeah, exactly. Like, 
win, win, win. <laughs> So, thank you, Wes, so much. If somebody wants to get a look at the reels uh, online, it's... Sigler.fish. Sigler.fish. So, very easy to find and all the information, lots of photos. And, of course, these guys are always at the shop and um, willing to help. And, you know, if you have any issues with reels, the, the turnaround on service is like that. Um, it, it's a pretty cool deal. So thank you, Wes, so much for joining us here. Thank everybody for being here. Uh, I think we're just going to sign off now because, uh, like I said, we've been on for an hour and five minutes. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everybody. See ya. Later.